So this is Batman and this is what he's been up to. We've captured his motion on a displacement versus time graph. And there are certain key features here that you need to understand. First of all, when you have a straight line, that means that uh, there's a uniform increase in displacement with time and therefore we have a uniform velocity at this point. We then have a point where the gradient is zero and that means if they're, if they're not increasing their displacement, their velocity, their instantaneous velocity at this time is zero. But we can use this graph to look at a few other things. What we can look at are things which are called both the instantaneous and also the average velocity. And again, we could do the same if it's a distant time graph and looking at average speed and instantaneous speed. But I'm going to be using velocity for this example. Now, the average speed is going to be equal to the total displacement over the total time taken. So, for example, maybe at this point here in the journey, to find out their average velocity, what we're going to look at is their total displacement, s, and their total time, t. And effectively, that's the same as drawing a straight line between the origin and the point here that we're investigating. And we can do that, you know, to find out, and that sort of, I guess it encompasses all the things where they're maybe traveling a bit faster, they've stopped, and it's their average velocity. That's okay, but sometimes you want to know exactly how fast they are traveling at this time. And to do that, we need to know their instantaneous velocity. And effectively, this is equal to ds by dt. And if you're doing A-level maths, you'll realize that what this means is that we're looking at the gradient at this point. So how do you find the gradient? Because the gradient at this point in his journey is not equal to this value over here. And the way you do that is you get your ruler out and you draw a tangent to the curve. So here's my tangent just touching the curve at this point here. And what you can then do is you can, you know, find some values, you can work it out. So at any point, if you want to know the instantaneous velocity, you need to look at the, the gradient at that point. And if it's a curved line, then you need to draw a tangent to that curve so it kind of hits it like this. The other thing about this graph here is it shows what's happening if it's a displacement graph about the, how the velocity changes uh, as this kind of um, Batman sort of flies around. Now, if we think about what's happening here, we've got quite a, a steep gradient. As time goes on, though, the gradient gets shallower and shallower. So if we kind of keep thinking about the time, the gradient gets shallower and shallower until eventually there's going to be a point here where the gradient is zero. What that means then is that maybe down here they're increasing their velocity, they're accelerating. Here we've got maybe a constant velocity and at this point here they're slowing down until they come to a complete stop. So this is like Batman coming along, slowing down and coming to a stop. What we then have on this part of the curve is a negative gradient. And that means that Batman hasn't just slowed down and stopped, he's actually changed direction and is going back the way he came. And we can find out all of that information just by looking at the this, this displacement time graph. By looking at the shape of the curve, by maybe um, drawing a, a line, a tangent to that and finding out the gradient, we can work out the velocity each time. And we can then see if the, the, if the velocity is increasing, it's decreasing, or perhaps it's a negative velocity. We can, of course, also look at a velocity time graph for Batman's behaviour. And here, uh, it's the gradient that tells us about the acceleration, and it's the area between the line, the curve, and the x-axis which tells us the displacement. So perhaps we look at this point here. Okay? If we want to find out how far Batman has travelled at this time, what we need to look at is the area below the line. And it's this area here between the line and the x-axis which is equal to the displacement of Batman at this point. We can also use this curve to tell us about the acceleration at different times. Again, if it's not a straight line, that means it's a non-uniform acceleration, which is actually quite a common thing. And again, what we can do is we can both look at, you know, maybe this point here. We can look at the average acceleration as being the total velocity over the total time, which is a line a bit like this. Okay, but if we want to find out the, av the actual instantaneous acceleration, again, we use uh, a ruler, we draw a tangent to the curve, we work out the gradient of this line, and that then tells us about the acceleration. So, what's happening here? Well, as the gradient is increasing, that means the, acceleration, the rate of acceleration is increasing, and then we get to the maximum acceleration at this point. At this time here, they're still accelerating, so they're accelerating up until we get to this point, because the velocity is always increasing. But at this point here onwards, the gradient is getting less steep. And as it get le gets less steep, that means the rate of acceleration is decreasing. So it's still getting faster, just not as much each second. 
until we get to a point at the very top here. At the point at the top, the velocity is going to be equal to its maximum value. And when the gradient is zero, that means there's going to be no acceleration. So this thing is traveling at its uh, a constant velocity just for a very small amount of time. What happens down here? Well, this means the velocity is decreasing, which means it must be decelerating. And again, we can tell the rate of acceleration by looking at the gradient of this line, remembering that this point here, it must be a negative value of acceleration because it's got a negative gradient for the whole time over here. So that's just a little bit more information about these tricky points that you get to when looking at a displacement time graph or a velocity time graph, how we can work at either the average or the instantaneous values of velocity or acceleration, and also what things like the area underneath that curve between the curve and the x-axis actually mean. Anyway, that's going to be really useful as you do more questions on this in physics.